This is Control Structure, episode 145, for July 17th, 2018. Brought to you by the Nexus.tv, podcasts from the technological convergence. This show has notes. Visit the Nexus.tv slash CS145 to see them. I'm one of your hosts, Andrew Bailey, and with me today is the other host, Stephen Orvis. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Uh, you haven't been around for a while. What's up with that? Only a month or so. Uh, month yeah, I guess. Weeks. Yeah, a few a few weeks. You don't say. A few weeks. <laughs> I got married, went to Yellowstone, came back. All the lived, way out there. Yes, all the way out there. So drove all the way out and saw everything there is to see all the way out. And then all the way back, I saw grizzly bears, and we saw elk, and bison. Did you shoot anything? Unfortunately, they had this weird thing about not letting you shoot guns in the park. We did shoot a lot of pictures, though. Okay, fair enough. (laughs) So, uh, did you do anything with your shack? We've been fixing the shack. The shack now has a functioning shower, and (laughs) uh, has two toilets that work, and one sink that works. Well, actually, it has two sinks, kitchen sink. And, uh, yeah, so Well, it's, yeah, plumbing is pretty important. Some of the plumbing is there. Some of the wiring is there. Some of the wiring's not there. So, like, I'm not exactly sure what the rules are around here, but I've heard, like, pretty much the primary rule for, like, a place being inhabitable is a functioning toilet. It does have a functioning toilet. So, by that rule, your place is now fit for habitation. Good to go. So now it's a, a livable shack. <laughs> Okay, so, um, in other news, I actually have neighbors now. I saw that. I was going to park. Well, first I was going to park in front of your car. There wasn't enough space. Then I was going to pull the neighbor's spot. I'm like, oh, Andrew has neighbors now. What happened? <laughs> um, yeah, once upon a time, my uh, landlord emailed me a few weeks ago and said that someone would be moving in this past Sunday. So that means we probably shouldn't scream it quite as loud anymore. But we can still start quieter. Oh, Okay. Raspberry? 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 Raspberry! Raspberry? Raspberry! <laughs> I'm trying to keep it down. <laughs> so, uh, have you ever found that when you're playing video games that it just takes up so much time? Uh, a little bit, but I generally enjoy it. In, I want to enjoy it. In today's modern time of technology, where we can automate everything, why not automate playing video games? Yeah, why not? You can have twice as much fun. Yes, exactly. You can spend time coding and then watch it play itself. Uh, so apparently, you can uh, use the built-in wolf wolfram language uh, that's on the Raspberry Pi to play the Minecraft that is on the Raspberry Pi. So you can go in there and build all kinds of things and drive them around. I think you get like the X Y Z coordinates, and then you can tell him to teleport to a certain coordinate, uh, and then you can also tell him to draw shapes. Apparently, he can build blocks out of any shape that Wolfram Alpha knows how to draw. So, like a sine wave, or a spear, or uh, like even you can put things together and make buildings. Uh, so it's kind of like having a mining turtle yeah, the, uh, in the old uh, PC uh, Minecraft, except for this is actually the player running. So I was thinking that would get away from the problem of you always have to be running around next to your turtles to keep track of them, which with this you can literally just script it and just like have, while you're at work, your guy could be building all kinds of cool stuff in Minecraft and you wouldn't even have to be there. So yeah, they built a giant axe. Oh, gold. Ah, why not? Just splurge a little bit and have some fun. And of course, since it's Minecraft, blocks can float in the air and there's no no problem at all building building stuff in the air. I like the house there, the next one down, that they, they had a house build, built from it. It actually looks a bit easier to build uh, than the mining turtles, because you have to basically come up with an algorithm uh, telling the turtle to turn, to go up, to go down, to place the block. Whereas this, you basically give it the mathematical function that describes the shape you want, and t- you tell it to go build it. So that's actually a lot easier to express. Uh, for building shapes than just coding it by hand. It's actually pretty cool. I bet. So now you can play Minecraft too, Andrew. And when I strike the ground in front of my house with the sword, a huge hole appears because he scripted a sick explosion. To apply that function to the hit history. So what did he do? Oh, he had tied? Oh, that's cool. So he tied in an event onto his hit history. Hmm. So you could use that to do add-ons then to the game as well. That's interesting. So, um, 
big news in Microsoft uh, quite a while ago, actually. Uh, Microsoft has bought GitHub uh, for seven and a half Instagrams. Now I have to find a new favorite source control repository place. Well, it seems like all the cool kids are moving over to GitLab. That's uh, that's what we were talking before the show. That's actually the open source one. You said it right. Mm, I'm not sure if it's... Well, I'm not exactly sure what the definition of open source would be for that. I mean, GitHub runs on Git, which is open source. One of the... The website itself, one of the ones, the alternatives, was actually the website was open source. So the management software for it, not Git itself. So, uh... Lots of excitement around that, uh, and in celebration, someone made a theme for GitHub, like you know, style it, styling it up like Windows XP. <laughs> uh, put Clippy in. Yep. <laughs> it looks like you're like, having issues with code. So many issues. Try adding clip art to brighten the mood. <laughs> Clippy's a good addition to it. Yeah, um, and then someone else made uh, like another. I think it's like a tweet, like a Photoshop mock-up of this. But, uh, yeah. So, you remember how, uh, like, the top graphics guy at uh, AMD, like, just decided to retire, and then, oh, he's hired at Intel now. Yes, I remember. So, uh, apparently Intel has been saying that they're going to launch a GPU in 2020. Of course, no one really knows, like, how good it'll be, how it'll stack up to like the top end of like Nvidia's mm. cards. Uh, no one really is really even sure of like you know will it be sort of like their existing graphics but bigger or something mm. entirely different. It's interesting that uh, the knowledge that one guy brings that they can launch old products. Yeah, I imagine that guy's paid well. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you know especially now that uh, you know. Uh, Actually, hold that thought for a bit, uh, so, because uh, we're going to talk about being mugged. Uh, I thought we were going to talk about guns. Oh uh, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about guns. Yeah, this is this is that. Yes. Okay. Good. So, um, people have been threatened at gunpoint over a lot of things, and now you can add a domain name to that list. So, uh, apparently, uh, some some guy broke into. Uh, let's see. Uh, this happened in Iowa, of all places. Like, you'd think that this might happen in California, but no, this happened in Iowa. That uh, 43-year-old man broke into a house of, uh, like, this 26-year-old guy and forced the guy at gunpoint to reassign the domain name to him. It's rather funny, because that's kind of one of those things that's going to have a paper trail. It does say that he was trying to assign it to someone else other than himself, but still, it's pretty funny that they would uh, think that that was something he'd get away from. And the domain name in question is doitforstate.com. I'm not exactly sure, you know, maybe this guy was a conspiracy nut. But, um, so, apparently, uh, Hopkins, the uh, mugger, uh, initially faced charges of kidnapping, possession of a firearm by a felon, because he had been charged with perjury like 12 years ago, and the use of a firearm during a crime of violence. It doesn't sound like he actually did all that well. It says he got hit with a stun gun, and then the other guy grabbed the gun and shot him a couple of times in the stomach or something, I think he said. Yeah. So it didn't work out so good for him. So yeah, good on good on uh, the police, I guess. Good on the police? Yeah. <laughs> oh, as in they didn't have to catch the guy? Well... Apparently they did catch him, so... I mean, he was had bullets in his tummy, so he <laughs> didn't have to chase him too hard. So, anyways, back to the GPU thing. Yes. So, uh, you know, I imagine he would be paid pretty well, because back in, like, January, uh, graphics cards were selling like crazy. Like, they could not keep them in stock, and prices were going up. So, in order to compensate... They the uh, manufacturers ordered more graphics cards, or rather, like more GPUs, mm -hmm. the processors. Unfortunately, um, things went a little overboard, and uh, now there's a huge oversupply in the market. Uh, it's got so bad that uh, 
an unnamed Taiwanese uh, manufacturer has uh, sent back a shipment of 300,000 graphics That's chips. That's a lot to return. Just be like, hey, we don't want these. Send them back. Yeah. And, um... That's pretty rare for that to happen, apparently. The next question is, how do you return a whole ship of electronics? <laughs> do you just send it back and be like, hope that they give you the money back? Well, see, the thing is, is that NVIDIA does not manufacture its own processors. They just mm. design them. Uh, they okay. hand the designs over to, uh, like, I think it's TSMC mostly, the okay. Taiwanese Semiconductor Manufacturing mm. Corporation. So, like, I'm guessing that uh, this Taiwanese OEM pretty much, like, sent it back to the manufacturer, okay. <laughs> which, for all I know, was, like, down the block from them. Oh, that's true. So it may not have been that much of a big deal. So, um, but yeah, so apparently this is causing quite a bit of, uh, you know, how should I say... So now, you know, what do you do with a whole bunch of graphics cards that you can't sell? Well, you need to lower the graphics card prices a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, this came out uh, at the end of last month that during this month there will be a 20% price drop. Which, uh, you know, because I've been sort of looking at graphics cards lately, I wish they would drop a lot more. Um, so you're at least waiting for next month then? Uh, or... I think I've finally convinced myself that the graphics card I have right now is good enough, ah. and I'm just playing all the old games in my Steam library. There you go. You have lots to go through, so... Yeah, and uh, all this comes as the NVIDIA CEO said that um, the next generation of graphics cards aren't coming for a while. Um, mm. So, you know, along with the, uh, you know, the drop in graphics card prices... Uh, that could lead to the fact that, you know, newer, uh, like a next generation of cards is coming. You're saying the drop of prices might mean that they have to make a new generation so that they can charge more. Yeah, money. like more of like an inventory clearing. Mm -hmm. Not just that they have extra inventory, oh, I gotcha. but new stuff is coming, so they need to clear uh, out the warehouse. I see. So, um, have you ever heard of Tencent before? Not until now. Yeah, it's uh, apparently a huge uh, internet company over in China. It's kind of like the Google of China. Mm. Um, they have joined the Linux Foundation at the platinum level, uh, which is which means that they donate over like half a million dollars to Linux every year. It's interesting. I looked them up. They make this thing called TARS, which is apparently an open source uh, microservice platform. So, you know, being China, you know, there's tons and tons and tons of users. So, yes, they would need that scalability Aww. there. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but not to be outdone, uh, Google has upped its membership level to Platinum also, which comes to a surprise because, like, I imagine that every single server that Google has runs Linux. Thus, it would be quite important for them to, you know, have a good level of support and development for it. So, yeah, Linux is uh, in a pretty good uh, situation, I'd say. Yeah, definitely a, a wave of the... Well, it already is on all the web servers anyways. So, uh, Firefox. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if they uh, are a beneficiary of the Linux Foundation, uh, but uh, version 61 has released with that uh, quantum CSS engine thing that they were talking about a while ago. I forget uh, what that did. So, like, have you ever written any CSS before? Just basic stuff. Yes, yeah, so you have, like, a whole bunch of, uh, like, essentially queries mm -hmm. on the document structure. Yeah. And then some, you know, uh, properties in, uh, to apply to those. Mm -hmm. uh, but there needs to be some way to map from the CSS file to the document, like the HTML document in memory. So apparently quantum CSS is like a multi-threaded way. Oh, so it can process the whole d CSS style sheet at the same time, more so. Uh, sort of. Like, uh, I should say, like one process goes through and yeah. like parses it into a model object. 
Is this the one where we did it in layers as it got more stuff from the server? Like it rendered something? Like as it got more from the server, it would bring it in? That's a different, a different quantum one. Okay. project. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, there needs to be a process to map from the CSS mm-hmm. in memory to the HTML document in memory. So uh, quantum CSS is like the multi-threaded way of doing that. So, um, or Fox is getting all threaded up. Yes. Uh, and apparently, uh, the, uh, TLS 1.3 has been enabled by default. So the next generation of, uh, security protocol is, uh, now active in Firefox. So like, uh, you know, HTTPS, mm-hmm. that kind of deal. Yeah. So like the sort of like next version under the hood That's of that. Good. So this say it blocks FTP now. Do what? I th- I th- uh, the next line under, I think I said it blocks FTP now. I just caught a glimpse of that. Uh, so access to FTP sub resources. HTTPS pages. So I guess I guess you can't load things from FTP inside of an iframe or mm-hmm. something. That probably blocks something so you aren't streaming it on not encrypted. It's interesting. It was at work the other day. We found out that apparently when you're running... Uh, a site like in development mode against local host, Fire Chrome does not send the cookies back by default, and you have to like do the credentials include from like the JavaScript. I uh, but on the fetch, but Firefox actually does by default. Like you don't even have to tell it to send the credentials, security credentials back. So it's interesting that Firefox is doing way better hmm. on making it easy to secure the site than Chrome was. So it's kind of funny. Hmm. So. Uh... When you type in a password, uh, you know, because you are a living human with uh, some body temperature, that um, some of your keys might warm up a little bit as you type in your password. They might. Yes. So a new exploit uh, has been, you know, essentially theorized Mm -hmm. and, like, actually proven uh, that you can point a thermal imaging camera at a keyboard and after someone has typed their password, the keys kind of glow a little bit. Uh, this is a Therminator attack, apparently. So it just look, looks at the residual heat left on a keyboard after someone has typed in their password to figure out, you know, what their password is. Uh, and this apparently is effective for, like, a minute afterwards. A minute's a long time. So, I mean, someone would have to... Like, type in the password and then leave for a yeah. moment. Um, someone snaps a photo really fast. Yeah. So that the clearly the answer to blocking it is to have a password that spans all keys on the keyboards at least two, maybe three times. Uh, and all at once. And, well, I mean, <laughs> if you just mix it up and just put them in all over the place, it should be so messed up that they're never a guess. Um, repeat keys also would help defeat this in general maybe because you wouldn't necessarily catch the strength of the first one and then you hit it the second time so there's not a stronger signal so they would just think it was hit towards the end of the sequence but they missed that it got hit towards the beginning of the sequence that uh or you can just like rest your keys rest your fingers on the home row and like uh-huh. put a lot of asdf in there that would definitely mess it up a bit yep uh researchers say that users who type Using a hunt and peck technique, <laughs> pressing on, only one key at a time Most while continually looking at the keyboard, are more susceptible to having their key presses harvested by this technique. So, so, yeah, basically rest in the home row and you'll be fine. Yes. So, uh, Spectre. It's something that never goes away because it's called Spectre. That one CPU bug that's been haunting us for a few months uh, that essentially allows... Uh, malicious code to extract one bit at a time out of uh, system memory, like protected memory. Mm -hmm. And apparently uh, one of these uh, attack methods has been tweaked a little bit into two more. uh, Which... Just having fun with this. Yeah. Like, I'm not exactly a low-level kind of person, so like, I'm... I don't even really understand this that much, but it looks like Pretty much every CPU ever made in the past ten or twenty years is susceptible to this. This is interesting because this puts a quite different pressure on the CPU industry than hasn't really been there before. Yeah, I mean Intel needs to you know have something to spend its war chest on. 
So, um, you remember Notepad? I mean, you don't really use Windows anymore, do you? Well, I have to use it for work. So, really? Yeah. We're technically, I could almost jump because we're using .NET Core and we're doing all cloud stuff. But Visual Studio, like, doesn't run quite as good. If I use Visual Studio Code, I could. But uh, it comes down to what the IT guys say you're allowed to do is kind of more so what how that one works. True. Uh, I guess at my place, they're pretty much, uh, you know, go ahead and install Notepad++. We don't care. Install every browser you want. Yeah, that, that it can be. Well, a difference may be healthcare where you have important data that might True. be done. Because we do host client data, too, so they're very... Very, very picky about things and stuff, which is good. It means that they're trying not to have someone's identity stolen. Yes. So um, Notepad is getting updated, uh, and it will support both variations of line endings. Now that is a really good change. Is needed that. Yes. Um, so it will also be able to display line and column numbers. Uh, oh, well. And finally, control backspace support. Like, proper <laughs> control backspace support. I know. That so, one was horrible. It's yeah. like, type it in the square box, and you're like, no. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, as you might have noticed, I'm more of a hotkey whore. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like in pretty much every other text editing program that, you know, if you want to go back a whole word... You hit, you know, control, mm. and then, like, left arrow key. I'm not really sure of too many that, that it doesn't work. Yeah. It's uh, pretty much so, just that they have a simple text box form and whoosh, notepad. So, and then if you want to, you know, erase the last word, control backspace, mm. except for notepad, and, like, pretty much most, you know, how should I say, text box UI widgets in Windows will yeah. put in those, like, square boxes. Yes. So I'm guessing those are like a control symbol or something. I bet it is. So uh, yeah, that will be nice, and uh, that and apparently maybe a few more features like being able to Bing a word straight from Notepad. That was kind of the weird one. It's like you're just going to promote your own search engine. I've okay, like I think Google Docs has this to go Google Google this word or phrase. I don't think I've ever really used that because I can actually use Control T and look stuff up. I forget if Google so has it. Explorer or Define. Well, if you type Explorer apparent, passwords, apparently I bet Google you Google has Google's Notepad too. Oh yeah, it is Notepad. Keep yeah. Notepad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty sure Explorer passwords would open up a box that Google's passwords for you. It's like let me Google that for you. Uh, so yeah, that will be in Redstone Five uh, later this year. So, like, probably, like, their fall update or something. They've been rolling out the updates. Uh, so, I would like to appreciate uh, Guido Van Rossum, the benevolent dictator for life of Python. Or, to be more specific, the former benevolent dictator for life of Python. Uh, because, uh, apparently, he's just uh, going to take a more or less indefinite vacation for right now. Interesting. Um... So, apparently, there was a uh, feature uh, known as PEP572. Uh, was it a, It's called Assignment Expressions, which uh, allows you to essentially, you know, assign a variable within, say, like an if statement. Oh, okay. Which is really useful. C-sharp has that. It, like, just happened, the latest version. Which, uh... You know, apparently caused quite a bit of uh, arguing back and forth on the uh, uh, Python development lists. People didn't like it. Yeah, with the colon equals thing. Mm. Uh, which I think kind of, at the face of it, kind of makes it a little complicated. But, you know, I don't know. The C sharp, it's not colon equals, but the C sharp one have been able to assign. I think it will. I think it kind of looks like how you can have a forge loop. You can say, like, var and then something in something. I, But the how I used the one in the, the if statement was you could do a cast. And you could basically be like, if it cast and it's not null, then do this. And if it cast, you obviously want an instance of it. If it doesn't cast, who cares? And so that was really handy in that case. Hmm. So, and I'm pretty sure you can assign things you know, 
this way in Java. Okay. You know, or at least like the same f- so feature. So wasn't that novel of a thing that he's doing? So, but like you would you would encounter it in like uh, usually in like file read methods mm-hmm. and write methods that it would like use this weird syntax to like assign the uh, like the next chunk of your read into a variable and put yeah. that in a while loop, mm-hmm. uh, which to this day makes me scratch my head of like exactly how it would parse out. Uh, but yeah, if, if Guido says, you know, let's have this. Okay. And I understand why people would you know want to object to it. I kind of do, but whatever it can be in there, I don't have to use it. Exactly. You don't have to use the syntax. And apparently a lot of people, uh, felt that way as well. So he's like, okay, uh, since I'm not going to appoint a successor, uh, yeah, I would like to remove myself entirely from the decision process. <laughs> I'll still be there for a while as an ordinary core dev, and I'll still be available to mentor people, possibly more available. Uh, but I'm basically giving myself a permanent vacation from being BDFL, and you will all you will all be on your own. Uh, after all, that's eventually going to happen regardless. There's still that bus looking around the corner, and I'm not getting any younger. I am not going to appoint a successor. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Create a democracy, anarchy, dictatorship, federation? <laughs> well, I mean, BDFL kind of meant dictatorship, right? I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. Interesting. It is true that a lot of the open source projects, uh, like, he's not the first one. A lot of them, as time goes on, they're gonna those guys that wrote those are going to start getting older and dying eventually, and so it's like there will be open source projects that are be kind of aimless, without leadership that somehow we have to pick pick up and organize as a community. So yeah, I uh, you know wrote a comment on on this. You know, it was like Python was my first programming language about 15 years ago. The bracket and semicolon free syntax is beautiful and approachable to this day. Python is my go-to for writing data format conversion scripts. I wrote a random sentence generator in Python 10 years ago that gave me and my friends hours of entertainment. I think we should probably use the spruce, whatever it is. Is it goose? Spruce. It's just spruce. We can look it in the fringe. Yeah. So, yeah, that's... It lives on my blog for right now. Wait, there's a movie about you? No, like, apparently I'm also a baseball baseball player. Baseball player? I didn't know, Andrew. (laughs) Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? You got traded? Yeah, apparently I'm a coach now. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, and I think I'm also like a philosophy professor somewhere. I'm a professor too. I teach at some college up in Massachusetts, I think. And I drowned a couple of years ago in a lake. <laughs> Just so you know, I am a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Happens. There we go. I forget where you have the spruce at. Yes, it's on the side there. Oh, there. Let's see here. Like the giant stalks. I don't know what an orchard ochre is. Ochre scene. It's a color, I think. Isn't. Apparently, this is grammatically correct, so I've been told. Awkward attack soft shoplifted. shoplifted. Okay. Uh, the. the is that, no, a grandmother will have excelled. <laughs> <laughs> Card will be flattening. Gneel Earthquake has danced, yet makes has snung at muck. <laughs> The now socks sideways. State Pardon. wars are looping straight. <laughs> Anyways. Yes, okay. So, oh yeah, and also my blog, I uh, wrote a story that uh, has a lot of the less than flattering uh, news articles about Google in it. All the ways that Google will help us live our lives better so we won't have to do things. Yes, and then, at least until it terminates your account. it would be fine. They'd never <laughs> shut your account off. And then the customer robot, the customer service robot, won't listen to you because, to it, you don't exist. So why should it talk to you? Yeah. And, like, give you the time of day or why you uh, allegedly uh, violated terms of service. No. It just won't care about you. And then you just go spastic on it and end up in jail for two centuries. 
least fun you times. have a place to stay. Yes, at least you will have a place to stay. Uh, with a holographic cat. <laughs> so, be better. Yes. So, um, yeah, nice to have you back, Steve. Good to be back. So, um, see, I did a whole bunch of grilling last Saturday. Oh, what did you grill up? Uh, I grilled some steak. Uh, yeah. And casserole and green beans and hot dogs. I would have uh, guessed the casserole. What's that? I said I should have guessed the casserole. Of course. You know, I should, I should probably do something that doesn't involve that, just to challenge myself. There you go. Come up with a new recipe. Yes. Uh, and even though the landlord said that they would be moving in Sunday, they were actually moving in Saturday. Ah. Uh-huh. So, like... Okay, whatever. I don't care if I make them hungry. <laughs> <laughs> They're all hungry and they're like, wow, this guy is like really good going. <laughs> so, so like, well, I was planning on doing this today, so I don't care. Yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> your porch is your grill. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they, they seem to be a, a nice couple over there. So That's good. Good to have good neighbors. Um, so, yeah. You Maybe. got chickens. Chickens. At the fair, we went to the fair and they had chickens. We've been trying to buy some from Royal King, but they've been out, so we have chickens now. So now when you walk outside of them, morning, you have a bunch of little chickens. Like, bah, 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 bah. They feed me, feed me, feed me. So it was pretty fun. We had some leftover cookies that we gave them today, some ears of corn and stuff. They're little chicks. Were, you, were those the cookies good. you gave to me? No, a different different <laughs> cookies than, than I gave to you. <laughs> those were the chi- cookies the chickens didn't want. <laughs> they weren't so good, so the chickens passed those ones. Oh, gee, thanks. Yeah. Uh, any roosters? Uh, there shouldn't be. I, mean, I did see two kind of go at each other, but they could have just been going at each other. They can do that sometimes, but they're supposed to be all hens. Okay. But so. you can always eat the roosters. Yeah. You can eat the hens, too, if you want. You can. So, uh, let's see. Aside from that, uh, I think that's it. So, have a good one. You too.